was Aladdin based on a real person? Hey why Scott, when the new live-action adaptation of Disney's animated classic, Aladdin, hits theaters on Friday, it will be just the latest step in the very long history of the tale you won with surprising origins. The rags to riches, hey race what we know and don't know about the history of the story, according to scholars who have studied the origins the Aladdin story. Gallery meet the full cast for Disney's magical live-action Aladdin reboot Pops Yuga. In the past, credit for telling the tale of Aladdin has often gone to Antoine Galland, a scholar and diplomat who served as a secretary to the French ambassador to Constantinople in the 17th century. He worked on Bibli. 1001 Nights started as a series of translations of an incomplete manuscript of a medieval Arabic story collection that dated back to the late 14th century, says Musin J. Al Musa'i, professor of Arabic and comparative studies at Columbia University and an expert on Arabian Nights. Between 17 by 1709, Galland had translated all of the stories in the original incomplete manuscript had been working with, and was trying to find the others. When Galland ran out, perhaps in search of more clues, Galland went to the apartment of his friend and rival Paul Lucas, a tomb raider, who traveled back and forth between Paris and the Middle East to satisfy Louis XIV's taste for jewels and other precious objects from the region. Lucas' apartment, scholars have long known that Diab gave Galland the story of Aladdin, but they don't know exactly where Diab heard the story in the first place. We don't know whether Diab created the story by combining elements that he learned from hearing other storytellers you in Aleppo or on the journey through the Mediterranean to Paris you or whether he heard the whole story in this form and recorded it in a manuscript or whether he found a now lost manuscript of the story and passed it on to Galland, says Paolo Lemos Horta, author of Marvelous Thieves Secret Authors of the Arabian Nights, who edited a translation of Galland's Aladdin by Yasmin. Seal that came out in 2018. Where does Aladdin take place? Scholars have seen a mix of different places in the Aladdin story. In the newest film Arafat A. Razaki, a research associate at the Center of Islamic Studies at the University of Cambridge, points out that early Arabic descriptions of an exotic, faraway land were often about China. Early British depict Disney's 1992 animated musical version was originally supposed to be set in Baghdad, the capital of Iraq but current events prompted filmmakers to switch gears. As one of the direct, despite the fantastical elements of the story, scholars now think the main character may actually be based on a real person's real experiences. Now a lot of new re- many scholars now think that that man could be Diab himself. Though Galland never credited Diab in his published translations of the Arabian Nights stories, Diab wrote something of his own a travelogue penned in the mid-18th century. In it, he re- in that memoir, Diab describes his own hard knocks upbringing and the way he marveled at the extravagance of Versailles. The descriptions he this idea is hugely significant in the history of the story. For 300, that's a mind-blowing revision of our understanding of where the story came from you the recognition that Aladdin is not just the fantasy of a 60-year-old French scholar and translator, but that it was born through the narrative skills and distinctive experience of a 20-year-old traveler from Aleppo, says Horta. Diab was ideally, in the travelogue, Diab describes how Lucas presented him in the court of Louis XIV at Versailles as a curiosity of sorts. Lucas insisted, Diab himself came from a modest background, and hungered for the class ascension that occurred in Story of Aladdin, says Horta. He wanted to have him, so Diab ran away from home, and eventually met Lucas. Diab eventually, to the scholars who study the tale, its narrative drama isn't the only reason storytellers keep finding reason to return to Aladdin. It reflects not only a history of the French and the Middle East, but also a story about Middle Easterners coming to Paris and that speaks to our world today, as Horta puts it. The day Diab told, Razaki adds, what Aladdin's origin story shows is a history of more complex intercultural relations. Syrians were te- and the fact that it was remade over the years is proof the story speaks to a timeless theme, not just one rooted in certain countries' histories. Aladdin is one of the folk tales central to the postmodernist and also post-industrial and imperialist mind, says Al Musa'i. Director's finds MSNUK are empowering happiness for Mental Health Awareness Month. 
Find out more of